What is good stuff, family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's going on with Tesla, Spy, Nvidia, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. I'm also going to break down why tomorrow is going to be another very important day for Tesla and the markets, as we have big bank earnings coming out, not to mention the PPI report. But before I begin to demo this information, before I talk about the data and what it's suggesting so far, let me just mention a couple of things. Firstly, I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo, the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you are guaranteed up to five free stocks. If you deposit $1,000 into the account, you're guaranteed up to 15 free stocks and the software ends very, very soon. Anyways, now let's break down what's going on with Tesla. To be honest with everyone, Tesla's looking very bearish right now as this thing is continually making lower highs and lower lows. It's been on a very, very strong downtrend. It's not looking that great, if anything, but we have more data coming out that could dictate how Tesla ends up moving. So I want to talk about what the data is going to be, why we have some very important things to basically pay attention to, what all of this means for Tesla's share price and the broader markets. So the first thing I just want to go over just very quickly is CPI. As a reminder, uh, core CPI came in as expected. There was a slight decrease compared to the previous month. Uh, that, that was aligned with expectations, but for CPI for all items. This was not as great. We actually saw a slight increase based off the data. And a lot of this had to do with the seasonal adjustments that had to be made. So there's a slight little increase. This is going to have a big effect on different sectors. Now, what caused the slight increase was mainly just energy and also shelter. So housing played a somewhat of a role as that makes up about 35% of the weight of CPI. And then energy played somewhat of a role as well. Uh, we also saw the adjusted numbers kind of like inflated a little bit higher, but that's pretty much something that's going to happen when you see these adjustments that have to be made. But anyways, I just want to make it clear and let me just remind you all, I don't fully trust CPI, guys. I'm not, not saying this data is objectively 100% accurate. I know CPI could be manipulated, but the best thing I could really do is still go over the numbers and just talk about them because this is what the market is oftentimes going to be looking at. So why is this CPI report so important? It's very simple. The market has been anticipating a Fed cut in March during the FOMC meeting. They think that the Fed, the market is thinking the Fed will likely cut rates by 25 basis points in March. Now, that's what the market was expecting, but their little hope could be made complicated because of how the Fed is going to respond to this. You see, the Fed, you know, they can't really tell us objectively that, hey, we're going to be cutting rates very soon. They can't say this with high certainty, considering that we just saw a slight increase in CPI. This makes things very, very complicated. The Fed has to be very uncertain, more ambiguous, and they're going to have to continue to say things such as they have to wait for the data. There's no telling what's going to happen. And there may be more fears emerging from inflation potentially coming back up. This will have a negative effect on the markets, and the lack of certainty is not the best. That's why we saw SPY sell off the way it did before trying to recover. But for tomorrow, let me just break this down. For tomorrow, we have lots of data coming out. Tomorrow, first and foremost, we have PPI data coming out. There are two sectors of PPI which are very important. Now, what is PPI, by the way? It's the producer price index. It's the leading indicator for CPI. It's like inflation from the, produ from the producer side, excuse me, instead of the consumer side. So today, CPI came out. That is inflation from the consumer side. Tomorrow, for Friday, one hour before the market opens at 8.30 a.m., we have PPI coming out, inflation from the producer side. So what are we expecting? For PPI, for core PPI, we're expecting a 1.9 to 2% rate, which is actually very close to the previous report. Core is, ex core is expected to be quite decent, but PPI for all items is expected to be between 1 and 1.3%, a little bit higher than what we saw previously. So we're expecting a slight increase in PPI year over year. Be very careful when you see the data now. We're going to be watching to see what this ends up causing. PPI is not as crazy as CPI in terms of how the market responds, but it is worth noting because it affects the Fed's policies. That's coming out once again an hour before the market ends up opening. Then after that, we have Cash Kari from the Fed giving a speech and then minor data after that. But make sure you watch PPI one hour before market open. That is very, very important. Then on top of that, we have something else which I think is going to be more important for the markets for tomorrow. I think this is the biggest thing coming out for tomorrow. Before the market opens, we have the earnings coming out for JP Morgan Chase for Delta, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, City, and then BlackRock, which is going to be one of the biggest ones. It's going to be very important. Now, I'm not a fortune teller. I don't know what the data is going to look like. I don't know what their earnings will look like. If 
all these companies end up beating on earnings, right? That could be bullish. The market could pump. If the companies do horrendously, the market could also sink and tank. If it's mixed, the market could have a very, very mixed response as well. We'll just have to wait and see. I'm not a fortune teller. I don't know right now. I do want to talk about something else about the charts a little bit later on anyways. Now, so make sure you pay very close attention to the bank earnings. That's going to be important for Tesla and the markets as well. And then I just want to note something else about SPY. For tomorrow, which is going to be January 12th, we have a 1.56 puts to call ratio. What this means is that the majority positions expiring are those puts. There is a chance we could see a squeeze at the end of the day to squeeze these shorts, but this will also depend on the earnings and things like that. I think that's going to be an even bigger factor. So watch for that. What's going on with Tesla? We have some new pieces of news coming out. I went over the Hertz news over my intraday video about how Hertz is selling about 20,000 EVs, most of which are going to be Teslas, uh, one third of their inventory. And then they're, they're planning on basically replacing them uh, with some gas powered cars to keep up with consumer demand. That was some big news. Tesla also announced it's going to be increasing some workers' wages amidst the union push, especially in the USA. I went over more details about this uh, in previous videos. And on top of this, uh, there's news that comes out that suggests that the UAW had an, on average about 25% pay increases. So we'll see if that ends up being close to what Tesla does. But we are going to see some production workers and wages going up, basically, that's confirmed. Uh, there's also a massive news that came out just about like an hour ago. Uh, Tesla Berlin is likely going to suspend most production for two weeks over the Red Sea because of supply gaps. That is some huge news. This is a little bit negative for Tesla. So what's basically going on is uh, Tesla is planning on suspending most car production at its factory near Berlin from January 29th to February 11th. The company said on Thursday, citing the lack of comp components due to the shifts in transport routes because of the attacks going on in the Red Sea. Very negative news. Uh, the par partial production stop is evidence that the crisis in the Red Sea, which is still going on, uh, is once again very serious. It's affecting economies around the world. And this once again is causing more disruptions for these different companies. This is affecting Tesla to some large extent. This, this adds pressure to Tesla at the time. And with that going on, I mean, Tesla is still kind of like all over the place now because of this. Tesla is also going to just maintain some potential suspensions because of this. Um, they're saying that production will resume in full on February 12th and do not respond to requests for further detail on which components were missing. But once again, this is affecting their overall production because of components, because of other issues. So Tesla is in a very critical state right now. And this could affect their numbers. This could affect their deliveries. This could affect everything. So make sure you're pre very, very prepared for this. Negative news has come out. If this goes crazy in the media tomorrow, this could be more negative for Tesla. I'll be watching to see if this news starts to explode. But if anything, this is bad news for Tesla. Make sure you're prepared for this. Make sure you're ready to see how this affects Tesla. Now, with that being said, guys, uh, the volume for Tesla was about 105 million. This is technically uh, a little bit below average, but not too bad. And then on top of that, uh, we're seeing the short volume actually going up just slightly. I saw a slight increase to about 63% or 61%. Um, I also want to add that Oppenheimer said that Tesla is going to perform equally with the markets. The price price ratio is dropping as Tesla is losing lots of strength. It's looking very weak right now. And Fridays historically are only green about 49% of the time. It's almost 50-50. Watch for volatility at noon and then 2 and 3 p.m. And then besides that, everything else is essentially the same. But what do I see for Tesla, guys, and the markets? Let me be honest with you all. I can't be as accurate or confident in my projection because it's going to depend heavily on the data. That's the reason why I told everyone that I basically closed out the majority of my trading positions. I'm not referring to shares, guys, just my trades. Uh, and I'm just going to wait for the data to come out tomorrow. So it's going to depend a lot on earnings and such like that. But based off technicals, based off just the technicals, Tesla is looking bearish. I'm going to be honest with you. It looks very weak. We had more bad news that came out. On the weekly time frame, looking at the moving averages, please know that our very important moving average is going to be the 50 moving average, not to mention the 200. Those are going to be very important supports for Tesla. I'm going to be watching, do we try to hold 224.5 at the 50 moving average, or do we end up breaking below it? That's going to be very important for our close. If we lose this, we're going to turn a lot more bearish. If we hold this, there is still some hope for Tesla to try to hold up. So that's going to be key for Tesla going into tomorrow. Uh, if, and hypothetically, let's just go over the hypotheticals. If we get good data, PPI is decent, and also we get some good news from 
Uh, the bank earnings in the market tries to balance. Watch 226.6, 228, then 229 right here where the screen trend line is as resistance for Tesla. If you break above this, 230 is coming, followed by 232. Those are, are going to be our resistance levels. Uh, for support, if we lose this support right here at 225, 224, we have some support there at the 50 moving average on the weekly. If we lose that, Tesla is going to be sinking all the way down, in my opinion, down to 222.5. If that fails us, 220 is coming pretty quickly, followed by those lower levels like 218 and beyond. So unfortunately, uh, from a technical standpoint, Tesla is looking more bearish. It favors the downside for tomorrow, especially because of the bad news that came out. But just to be safe, okay, you always want to be open-minded. You want to be watching the pre-market and see what news comes out, what happens with the big bank earnings, what happens with PPI. Watch that just to be safe to see which way Tesla goes and how it holds up. But once again, technicals are showing Tesla's relatively weak. As far as SPY goes, I want to call out some very important levels. Honestly, guys, I'm sorry. I can't really predict exactly how uh, you know the, the data is going to look. Uh, we grabbed some liquidity around 478. We rejected, came back down to about 472, bounce off that, and now we're kind of flat right now. This tells us two things. Number one, the market could sell off off of bad data. And number two is the buyers are still present. They're still trying to defend the market. So we're kind of indecisive right now. We just closed very flat. If we get good data tomorrow, good data is referring to like um, very, very good bank earnings, even if PPI is decent. The bank earnings are the most important. You know, that could still help SPY hit 478 if that breaks 480 is a possibility. If we're bearish, we want to see it lose 474, then 472. If we lose the low from today, expect 470, then 468. What do I think is more probable? In my opinion, SPY is looking very indecisive, kind of flat. It's still holding up nicely as buyers are present. So I wouldn't be surprised if there are buyers that try to defend tomorrow. But just to be safe, let's see what their earnings look like. Let's see what happens with the PPI report. And let's be very open-minded. Don't forget, we have a lot of puts expiring tomorrow. So just be very careful. If I was a fortune teller, I would give you guys all the answers. I just don't know what the data will be. That's why I'm being kind of like, I'm being less certain right now. And I'm trying to be more open-minded and less biased. Uh, when it comes to the QQQ, watch this 410 area for bullish 410, then 412 is coming. I'm going to be looking at that 412 area for some very, very critical levels. For support, you're going to be watching this thing not just at 408, but I would say 406. If we lose this, 404 is coming. And then it comes all the way down towards that 400 area. I think if we lose that. So in my opinion, we're kind of indecisive right now in the QQQ. We're going to be watching to see how the data affects it. So that's the best bet, at least for tomorrow. We'll just have to see. For Apple stock, it's the same thing. Apple technically has kind of like this, you could argue it has a nice accumulation structure, kind of like an inverse head and shoulders, if not kind of like a cup and handle. And it looks bullish technically, uh, but technicals are not everything. So if you want to be bullish, you want to see it break above 188. If you're bearish, you want to see it basically lose 183.5 and start sinking down lower. As of right now, we're in the middle. So we'll watch and see how the data affects this. For NVIDIA, We'll be watching to see what the data causes as well. It's very indecisive, guys. We got this big drop, big bounce, and a drop. Very indecisive. We're just trying to hold around this 545 area. If we're bullish, very simply, we're going to be trying to break 550, then eventually 552.5. If we're bearish, we're going to be watching for a break below 542. If that fails us, we're going to be looking for a bigger drop towards this wick down here at 536. Where are we looking on NVIDIA? We actually favor the bulls a bit more since we're still technically on this nice uptrend. We're still holding support. But just to be safe, watch and see the big earnings, especially BlackRock's earnings. That's going to have a big effect on NVIDIA. It's favoring the bulls a bit more, but we'll see what the data gives us. That's it for the main ones. I also want to call out the VIX one more time, which is still kind of indecisive. VIX is still kind of stuck uh, right here. It is starting to basically lose this trend line right here so we're approaching the support today it was kind of flat so we'll see if the vix continues to sink down towards our major support here we're still holding this first support at this 12.4 area so once again we'll be watching this as well on the vix and i'll be very patient now i'm just going to go over a couple of more uh details about the charts just a couple more before i end the video so for SoFi, um, make sure you watch this range i'm going to actually switch over to my other emas because these are more prevalent for this chart uh, on the four hour time frame, I'm basically looking at actually, I'm not supposed to use the four hours, I'm supposed, I'm supposed to use the daily. Let me actually check the daily. Uh, I believe it's the daily, so th that's correct. So, tomorrow, we're currently barely holding eight. The bears want to see this actually lose 7.86 and eight. So, if we lose eight dollars, watch 7.86, and if we lose that, we're more bearish. The bulls want to see us basically bounce above 8.45 and break out 
past 8.8. I'm in the middle with SoFi. It depends on the data. The bank earnings are going to have a big effect on SoFi. So watch for a big move tomorrow. We will see how they do. Do not forget we have a big gap above. So we'll see if this thing tries to push for that gap fill. But I'm open-minded. Whichever way we break, if we break above the 20 on the daily, if we break below the 200 on the daily as well, that's going to determine the bigger move. So watch those EMAs very carefully. On the IWM, if we're bearish, we're going to be looking for a break below 191 to push to 188.5. We got to try to hold that. Hold that. If we lose it, we turn bearish. If we're bullish, you want to see a break above 195 to push for 197 for this gap fill towards 199. In my opinion, it's a completely indecisive back and forth and back and forth price action. The trend is favoring the bears a bit more, but just to be safe, we'll see what the data gives us. It is looking a little more bearish to me, though. It could test the 50 EMA, but just to be safe, watch the data. That's always going to be very important. Just for a few others, we have Microsoft. Very simple. If you're bullish, you want to see it get up to 390 and try to break that. If you're bearish, you want to see it lose 380 to 379. Then we start breaking down. The daily got a bullish cross to run the PPO, so the trend is favoring the bulls a bit more. It is looking indecisive on the daily, however, so we're just going to be patient and see how it goes. But with that being said, be patient. We'll see how these, these things end up looking, and we'll just see how this ends up continuing as time goes on. But watch your levels very carefully. We'll see how it goes. For AMD, if we're bullish, we want to see it break above 151. If that breaks, 155 is a possibility. If we're bearish, we want to see it lose basically the 5 EMA at 146.3. If we lose that, I'm, I'm expecting it to get very close to one. 44 and eventually 140.47 so right now i can't really predict it we're very indecisive depends on the data uh but it is looking like it could be forming kind of like a cup and handle like formation here uh so if it is trying to form that giant cup and handle then we're going to be looking to see if that ends up being the case uh with that being said i mean it could try to perform another one it is looking like it might drop a little bit more to me so I could see some downside from technicals, but once again, the data is going to have a bigger effect. Now for the VIX, VIX is looking a little bearish on the daily time frame based off the PPO. It was kind of indecisive, tried to push and come back down today. If it keeps sinking, this could actually favor the bulls a bit. The dollar is what's completely indecisive. If it breaks 102.8, we favor the bears for the stock market, the bears on SPY. If the dollar goes up, if the dollar goes down and loses uh, the support right over here around 102 then this is going to favor the bulls for the stock market the bulls for spy and etc so we're completely stuck right now the dollar's not doing much it's very indecisive so we'll have to wait and see on coinbase watch the 50 ema at 135 if we look like we might test this since we look very bearish on the daily 135 is a level to watch for we look bearish for right now on the daily uh, but we'll see how the data affects this if we try to balance watch resistance around 144 then 150 and 153 watch support around 135 so first off 140 then 135 if that fails us we could get very close to 130 i'll be watching these levels carefully just to see how we go but for now let's just be very very patient on google google if we want to be bullish we want to see this thing break above 146 and eventually push higher if you're bearish you want to see this thing lose 142 and come down to one. 40. I'm in the middle right now, but I do want to note that an uptrend is still very possible on Google. Uh, I'm completely indecisive because it depends on the data. So we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, this could turn a little bearish right here off this projection as we saw liquidity coming up here. Uh, but just to be safe, I'm always going to be uh, in the middle depending on that. Amazon's about to get a bullish cross on the PPO, so it does favor the bulls a bit more. Uh, if we break out, I think 157 could break and we could go get close to 160. If we turn bearish, watch this thing retrace towards 155. If that fails us, 152 is next, followed by 150. Amazon is favoring the bulls a little bit more, but just to be safe, we'll wait and see. Uh, because of the fact that we have all the data coming out and because it's kind of indecisive at the same time. For a minute to turn bearish, you want to see it lose 363. If we lose that, it's going to be sinking lower. If you want to be bullish, you want to be breaking the high we made today and break above that to get to 380. I'm in the middle. It is looking kind of weak right now. I could see a test 363, but just to be safe, we'll see what BlackRock and all these big banks give us. So that being said, guys, I'm, I'm a very honest person. I'm not going to lie and say I know everything and this and that. Nope. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what's going to happen with the bank earnings. I don't know what PPI is going to look like. So let's just wait and see. Sometimes I have to make videos like this when major pieces of data are coming out. There's no point in pretending that I know everything because nobody truly knows. All these people on YouTube that pretend they know, they don't, they don't truly know what's going to happen tomorrow, just like how I don't know.
that's the reason why I was being honest with everyone. And I'll wait and see what happens tomorrow morning and return to give you guys another update. All right. So thank you for listening. Have a great day. Remain calm, cool, and collected. And I'll see you guys very soon on the next one. Thank you and peace out.